Well, hello there, folks, and welcome to another edition of Random Road Cuts here on Utah State Highway 158, just above or next to Pineview Dam and Reservoir in scenic Ogden Canyon. Uh, previewing some of my field trip sites, I thought we would stop at a road cut here and do a random road cut. If you're new to random road cuts, we stop at a road cut anyone will do. We make some observations together. We work through our interpretations and possible geologic story that uh, might explain what we're seeing. So thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey, and let's get started with this road cut. It's always good to start out with some regional context and what we know about the area. We're here in the Wasatch Mountains, which really contain a diverse suite of rock types, um, everything from intrusive igneous rocks to sedimentary rocks to metamorphic rocks. Um, quite a few bits of, uh, quite a few rocks types that are possible here. So we can see these rocks here are layered uh, from a distance. And let's go ahead and head across the highway which is on and off busy every now and then. And then we'll have to climb over the little guardrail there and get up and close to the outcrop. But we can see some of the layering. We can see there's some differences in color. So knowing that we have layering in the rocks, that would make it either uh, sedimentary, possibly a foliated metamorphic rock, or uh, I suppose, some type of volcanic rock, although we don't get a whole lot of those in this part of Utah. So let's head down to this dark gray section first and see if we can piece some of this together. So color is always important when looking at rocks, uh, the size of the material, trying to figure out if it's made out of grains of sediment or actual crystals. Um, so here we are, you can kind of see there's some gray, different kind of swirly colors and textures in this rock. Um, there's some real thin white lines running through the rocks. It looks like veins of some sort of mineral. Now I did bring my handy dandy acid bottle because this color and texture of rocks and knowing these layers are these rocks are layered uh, my spidey senses were initially telling me it's probably some type of sedimentary rock and in particular this looks to me like some type of carbonate either a limestone or possibly a dolo stone so let's go ahead and test it with our dilute hydrochloric acid um, let's see if i can get it focused there sorry about that you can see Let's see if we can do that again. It's like a three, three-handed experiment here. There we go. Yeah, so you can see it fizzing here, uh, reacting to the acid. Particularly where the white is, so those are most likely calcite veins. Uh, the gray stuff's reacting a little more weakly. It could be dolostone rather than limestone. And oftentimes dolostones uh, originally were limestones that have been replaced. The other cool thing I'm seeing here is um, I gotta, I'm got i using my camera this time rather than my GoPro, so I've got to work the zoom a little better. Notice on this face right here, there are some striations. I've zoomed in here. This surface is smooth to the touch, and you can see these lines cutting diagonally across the rock face here. This is a small fault, and these are called slicken lines. Uh, so they tell us the direction that that tiny little fault moved when it uh, actually shifted and moved, producing some sort of probably small, very tiny earthquake. But that helps us a little bit with understanding how these deformation structures like faults um, helps us understand which way they moved, which gives us some insights into kinematics and such. So it looks like we have a, a bedded carbonate, limestone or dolo stone. These are always good rocks in many places to look for Fossils, limestones and dolostones are deposited on the seafloor, um, most often anyway. Sometimes you would get them in lakes and other environments as well. 
let's work our way across a bit here. We'll need to go down in a second. Um, yeah, and then there's places where it looks like we have some calcite uh, nodules, just precipitated calcite. So places where this little white blob here is where we had a um, water move through the rock, dissolve out some of the calcite, and then redeposit it or precipitate it in that little kind of lens or blob there. You see a couple more of those back here. And here's another one of those really nice uh, fault surfaces. You can see the slicken lines running across this one more or less horizontally. So it tells us that this was a this fault moved more or less in a side to side direction. Again, uh, it's pretty smooth on the surface of these small little faults. So let's work our way a little further and see what the the next unit holds. So now we know we're dealing with uh, a sedimentary unit, at least this one. And so it stands to reason that most likely what we'll see underneath this or adjacent to it will be more sedimentary rocks, possibly of the same type, possibly of different rock types. So a little bit of a change there. There's our gray unit we were just on right here. And then it changes to this lighter colored rock. So let's see if we can little steeper here that we can get to it right here get up to this um, and this is a little bit different here um, it's a little gritty to the touch more um, doesn't have the white stripes running through it doesn't seem to have as much calcite cutting through it and so it looks like it could be a sandstone so let's go ahead and see yeah, no reaction with the acid on these surfaces. So this seems to be a sandstone, um, kind of a medium grain sandstone as I sort of feel it, feel the grain size, and it lacks the calcite, the carbonate material um, that we found in the unit above. So here we have a nice sandstone. Both of these are somewhat, I guess, medium to thickly bedded. The beds are ranging from a meter to half a meter few feet something like that um, so let's check this out a little bit not seeing a whole lot of diversity here although right here now I'm spotting something if I can get up there um, hopefully you can see this okay but right here on this surface here's our main bedding layers coming through here but right here some of these there's some faint lines cutting down to the left in this little section here that suggests that this is um, a, a little area of cross bedding. So it could be a little bit of cross bedding in that section there. So that's pretty interesting. So let's head over to the next little spot. Okay, so a little bit of cross bedding. And the cross bedding might show up when we have um, depositional environments that are either windblown sand or possibly um, streams like the inside bend of a stream what we call a point bar might be something like that so let's head down the op outcrop a little bit further so we're keeping track of things we got the gray it looks like we're still in this sandy interval perhaps with the sandstone and then coming down this way it looks like we're moving down section the rocks are all tilted uh, away from us dipping away so as I walk in this direction to the west I'm walking down to older rocks that lie beneath the ones we've already ones we've already looked at there Okay, so now we're in something that looks a little bit different. Back to more gray looking rock and rock that seems to have splashes of this, the calcite on it that we've seen before. Um, so let's make sure we've got a nice fresh sample or surface to test. Let's see, break off a little piece here. And then we'll go ahead and test that with the acid. 
Yeah, and that's fizzing, that's fizzing really well there. So we've got probably a limestone, another carbonate, uh, deposited most likely on the seafloor. Knowing this part of Utah, we're probably, this whole sequence is very likely Paleozoic in age, so anywhere from 540 to 250 million years. Um, so we've got limestone way up high, that sandstone bed, and now we've got some more limestone in here. Uh, there's kind of a sharp contact here between the gray rocks we just looked at above and then a different looking unit down here. This looks like more sandstone. Let's go ahead and test this with the acid bottle. And yeah, really no reaction there. There might be a weak reaction. So this could be, in fact, let's go ahead and try a little, pretty hard actually. My thought was it might be a dolostone, um, but it does have a little bit of calcite, but it's pretty hard and durable. So I'm, I'm thinking it's a sandstone possibly with some calcite as cement between the grains busy here with the road literally like a few feet back from me um yeah so let's work our way down just a little bit further because i thought when we were on the road or across the road i saw a pretty interesting feature um so more of these kind of medium bedded sedimentary units some a little darker some a little lighter sandstones and carbonates mainly. Then we get another sharp contact down low here near road level uh, between that same sandstone we just looked at and another gray unit, um, which may be another limestone, but you never know. You can't just go on color. That's why we have to test these a little bit to see what they are. So let's see if we can figure out rock type here not much fizzing on the surface a little more on the broken surface so again uh, possibly a dola stone and again we have this sharp contact right here cutting across the layer um, and it looks like this dark unit continues down to the end of the outcrop um, obviously with these random road cuts you could spend you know a lot of time you could spend an hour on this one road cut just really diving in one thing that's interesting here and i think we'll get a better view from back a little bit but notice here we've got the gray the dolostone carbonate sandstone contact that comes over but then almost like comes back up and i can see more of that gray above now possibly that's the other gray rock above but i can actually see this light colored rock pinching out so I think what I want to do, while well, I've got a gap here in the traffic, is move back from the road and see what that looks like. And what we have here is a fault. So you can see the beds right here, that white, that tan gray contact coming up, but then it basically is truncated. It runs into another layer, another line, if you will, that cuts across this way. And that places the gray layer on top of it. So what I think is going on here is I think this low angle surface right here where my finger is pointing to is a small, is a fault. Uh, it would be a thrust fault. It's shoving these rocks above that line over to the right relative to these rocks here. So in other words, these gray rocks down here are the same as these gray rocks over here. It's just that the fault is taken this side and shoved them over the top relative to this side. You can see that fault continue up and cut up the section there. Sorry, jet overhead. And we can see that that gray layer there is different than the one we saw earlier, which is higher up the hill. In fact, we should be able to see, yeah, the first gray layer, the sandstone gray, and you can see that repetition uh, through that section there. So pretty cool there. Nice little uh, thrust fault exposed in the road cut. Over here, you can see the same relationship. 
where we have gray rocks that are truncated here. Here's the thrust fault right here. And then the gray layer is repeated on top. So we're looking at offset of maybe, oh, I don't know, maybe about six, seven meters, 20, 25 feet, somewhere in that range. Um, so a pretty significant fault in the sense that we can actually see it here, uh, road level. So pretty nice. So that's the same thrust fault that actually continues the length of the outcrop. So that's one thing to look for when you're looking for these faults is finding you know, repetition of layers or layers that just terminate abruptly uh, and are cut by some sort of feature. So pretty awesome. Nice little road cut, a uh, little bit of a busy road. So excellent. So thanks again for joining me for this edition of Random Road Cuts. Appreciate your support of the channel. Appreciate you liking and subscribing. That's always helpful. Hope you like the series and we'll see you at the next road cut. Take care.